You don't gotta sell yourself or sell your soul to get anywhere. It's a Haitian thing. So make sure y'all do what y'all gotta do because nobody can say anything about your work ethic as long as you do what you gotta do. And listen up, baby. You can do whatever you want, but don't think you're about to swim back this way and try to talk to me. So we are back today with another story time video, guys. And this story time video today is the time that I got set up. Now, this story time seems like it's gonna end a little crazy, but it actually benefited me because I played the game really, really smart. And that's one thing you gotta do. You gotta be a chameleon, okay? You gotta really catch people when they don't expect you. And I'm the perfect candidate for that one. That's my Capricorn background. So today's video is going to be a nice video. Um, this video is kind of based on my first nursing job. Um, I feel like this video would be good for any new graduates or anybody that's like changing a job position. Just had a really hectic time at work, especially if you're the type of person, which I don't condone, the type of person that likes to go to work and kiki and make friends. That is like the biggest no-no. I literally am the type of person I'll tell you, especially if you're about to graduate from nursing school, go to work, focus on work and keep your head down. That's it. Um, and if I would have listened to that advice the first job that I got, I would have been just, I wouldn't have to deal with the stuff that I had to deal with. But it prepared me for the other jobs because could nobody mess with me at the other jobs and I wasn't talking to nobody at the other job. So you kind of get where I'm going with this one. So L'Oreal did send me a PR package. It's not sponsored. And I want to show it to you guys, especially because I'm doing a makeup tutorial today. Um, they did send me their starting lineup for their long wear makeup. And it seems like they got a new setting spray up in this joint right here. So... Uh, they got a setting spray in here. They have a long wear lipstick. I can't even pull this out, but let me show it to y'all real quick. So they have a new setting spray right here. They have a long wear lipstick and they have this brown lamination that I want to try for my brows today. And they also have a highlighter, which the highlighter is way too light for mama skin. So I'm gonna have to give this as a gift to somebody. So yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and try these out. I didn't know that they had a setting spray so this is the l'oreal three second setting mist and this one says it's 36 hour do um is it doing no it's a uh, transfer waterproof heat up to 100 uh, up to 36 hours so this is a new setting spray okay smells kind of like the one i got from patrick star kind of has it almost smells like um like hairspray as well too i do want to try this brow lamination out too because Y'all know I want to get my brows nice. So let me just go ahead and try this out first. I came up with y'all, so. Oh, okay. Um, Obviously my brows aren't done, but I just kind of like to pull them up before I do them, just to kind of get to see what I'm working with. Okay, so this brow lamination. Nice, 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 L'Oreal, nice. Um, and L'Oreal's coming out with fragrance as well, too. I don't know if you guys know that. I'm on their PR list. And they're coming out with um, their own like fragrance now. So I can't wait to get that PR package. Next time I get that PR package, I'll show it to you guys in the next story time. So if you guys want me to do like PR packaging and story times, I could do it on vlogs. But my vlogs now be just so... The vlog, if you've been watching my vlogs recently, there's just been a lot going on, shopping and stuff like that. So I don't want to over compile the vlogs up. They're already like 45 minutes to an hour long now. So... Um, I'll kind of show you guys the PR packages here. Usually I'll use the NYX, the brow glue. But I'm going to try this one out today and see what this one. This one looks pretty good. Look at that. Look at that lip. And the brush itself is a nice brush as well, too. So let's just do this first. And then um, I'm going to actually do the rest of the brows off camera because the brows just take too long. And last video, I did the brows off camera. That's why the video wasn't that long of a chit chat because y'all know I could draw a jacket up, honey. Right. So I did my brows already, so I'm just adding a little bit of foundation powder on my eyelids. I'm keeping it like a nice, neutral, basic eye. I'm not doing too much with my eyes today. I'll do some lashes. Obviously, you guys see my lashes ain't here no more, so I'm going up for a new set soon, but I'm just going to wait it out a little bit. Just take a break from wearing lashes just so I can, you know, let my real lashes breathe. Uh, and my brows are a little bit chunky right now, but I like them like this in the beginning, and then I'll go back and clean them up once the final look is done. But yeah, so guys, my first nursing job was at, um, was an 11 to 7 position, was a night nurse position, and I worked at an assisted living. Now, this assisted living was an assisted living that had two floors, and there was about 18 residents at the top and about 18 residents at the, bo at the bottom. So on average, you would have about 35 patients at nighttime. If you got lucky, you got 
got seven to three shift or you got three to 11 shift, you would have two nurses working or a med pass nurse and one main nurse on the floor. So I got the 11 to seven shift. A lot of the times you'll end up getting 11 to seven when you graduate, that it is what it is. And I didn't really care. It was a good shift. Not a lot of things happened on the shift and I had two aides at work, one at the top and one at the bottom. So this was a good, decent job. I thought that it was gonna be like, you know, something easy simply because I was basically the only nurse on shift. So I was the night supervisor nurse, which was cool. I just graduated and I got the title as a nice supervisor. The job was kind of those jobs where they was looking for nurses. So they was just trying to throw anybody into position, I guess you could say, but I was very thankful for that experience. I ran the entire floor by myself. I had all the residents by myself on top and bottom floor. Even if you think about that now, that's technically not the way you should do things it should be two nurses especially with that many residents and with these types of residents this place was more about a money it was more of a money grab and you guys if you're a new nurse or going into nursing you'll learn that um right away it's all about money like and that's the part that i just don't really like there's a lot of politics in it a lot of like drama and it's really it goes from being about the patients to about like just like stuff internally with nurses and stuff as far as financing and nursing which i can't stand because like why are we losing focus focus on taking care of the patients why are we like why is all this other stuff coming to the forefront and more important than the patient itself that's the reason why we're here i hate that about nursing i hate when I tell you guys I hate that about nursing, I hate it so freaking much because it's annoying. Like, why are we not here doing what we're doing because this is our job? Why are we here worrying about how many beds to fill because they need money? Like, what? Like, whatever. So, I had work on this job for a couple of months and I got kind of acquainted with the CNAs that worked there. Obviously, I'm a new graduating nurse and I was really young at that point. I was the youngest. When I first started finished nursing school, Every single job that I worked at, I was the youngest. I was like 23 when I first started. So obviously, you working in there as a younger nurse, you know, um, people are gonna have an issue with that, especially the older CNAs. Some of them, they were a little bit like, oh, here goes a new young nurse. She's about to come in here and be a bulldog or whatever. But when it comes to me, I'm not initially like a bulldog. You gotta show me who you are first. And then I'm gonna go from who you are, who you show me who you are first, and then I'm gonna um, treat you accordingly. So um, I went in there with respect. Obviously, I'm gonna be respectful to everyone because they were expecting me to come in there like a bulldog nurse. Because what I didn't know starting this job is that management. Um, was forcing the employees into being like secret detectives on the on the on the workers and stuff like that and with my job i obviously had to work with two people right so if i'm the only nurse on the ship i have to delegate tasks so i did my delegation the CNAs that I had on the shift were excellent CNAs. They did everything they needed to. I would go in the night, go downstairs and check up on one of them. I would go upstairs because the one worked upstairs with me and she was really cool with me, I liked her. I used to just scan the floor just to make sure everything was fine. They were on, they were doing their job. They did their job really well, right? So um, one day uh, my supervisor who I cannot stand and I still don't, I can't stand her to this day because she honestly just, I feel like, you know, there's some people that go to school to get degrees just to get the degree or whatever. And some people that are actually passionate about the stuff they do. She had no passion. She, I think she's just book smart and you, I'm, I'm gonna get to that point. I think she was just book smart and got her RN but has absolutely no bedside manner. It don't matter how smart you are. And I notice this a lot with a lot of nurses that will go to school because they're smart. But then when they get to the job, they just can't understand or handle because they suck at bedside manner. Just because you're book smart does not mean you need to be a nurse. I'm just putting that out there. Like just because you're book smart does not need does not mean you need to be a nurse. You also have to be have bedside manner and be very respectful and understand, have empathy with patients. So a lot, of, a lot of people go in and doing it for the money until they realize that mm, this might not be for me. So it's definitely a career field you need to evaluate because if you're doing it for money, you're not going to enjoy it. If you don't like people, you don't like patients and stuff like that, then you're not going to enjoy it. That's straight up. Straight up, okay? So this supervisor I had, she was stupid. Like she was dumb. She was dumb. She was very wealthy. Um, yeah, I don't, she used to talk about her husband being very wealthy. She was from a very wealthy part of Connecticut and she just got the job as a DNS at this job. So um, she had, had a conversation with me and she was talking about how she wanted me to go and spy on the CNAs and stuff like that and report back to her because she was trying to get rid of a CNA, right? The CNA she was trying to get rid of was a CNA that worked upstairs on the floor on my night shift. Now, the only reason why she wanted to get rid of the CNA is because there was another 
another girl, a Haitian girl, who's very sweet, who was, you know, doing the most to show the job that she was qual that she was quality in her, uh, CNA and that she deserved a full time position because there was not that many full time positions, and I felt like they were trying to push the older CNAs out to give the position to a younger CNA, which to me is not right. Like, and I'm not. Let me tell you something. I don't and. It, and you know what's funny? I know the, the Haitian girl probably was mad at me thinking like, oh, I'm Haitian, you should be looking out for me. I don't give a F if you're Haitian or not. And this lady's Jamaican. She does an excellent job and she we work very well together. And just because we're from the same country does not mean I'm going to throw this lady under the bus to have you come fill her position. That's never going to be me. That's not how I work. So number one was never going to be part of that. So I guess the... DNS realized that I wasn't going to be that girl because I'm not that girl. I don't care about hours. I don't care about getting more hours or anything like that because you want me to snitch so that I can move up the ladder. It's never going to be me. I can find another job that's not requiring me to do that. And guess what? I had several jobs that didn't ask me to be, to do stuff like that to get hours. You know, just be yourself and you'll get the hours. So uh, I refused to do it. And it's not like I verbally refused to do it. I just didn't do it because I'm not doing it. Okay, so I, ref I basically just did not do it. So one night she decides to come into the job and it was mad random, right? So we have this system. They usually come down the first pair of stair uh, downstairs and you can hear the elevator open. So the CNA that was downstairs heard something happening. So she called me upstairs and she was like, hey, it sounds like somebody's coming up, right? So I called the other CNA upstairs. I said, it sounds like someone's coming up just to kind of give everyone a heads up. Y'all know what I'm talking about. The ones that were, y'all know what I'm talking about. So I called the CNA and I was like to her, hey, and I'm in the office, right? I'm chilling in the office. I be in the office by myself. Got my legs, just sitting up there, just scanning the area. Again, you never catch me sleeping on that shit. I ain't stupid, right? So I'm in the office, minding my business, probably on my phone, flipping through some charts or whatever, just so I can get some notes done or whatever. And then I see um, the, what is it? The lady that works for HR, and this is like two, three, this is like three o'clock in the morning. The lady from HR, and I also see my DNS come up, and they're just walking through and they're coming into the office. And I'm like, three o'clock in the morning, why are y'all here? Like, why are y'all here? So I didn't say nothing about it. I'm just sitting there, like, okay, like, I guess they decided to show up because they wanted to see you know, what was going on if anyone was sleeping, because at the same time, we're not dumb. Ain't nobody sleeping here, you dummy. Like we like, come on now, like y'all, like like really. So she came in, didn't get nothing, couldn't say nothing, didn't get nothing. I think she was very frustrated that day because she thought that she was gonna have something to fire this lady with, right? But she had nothing. So they ended up finding another reason to try to get rid of her, and it backfired on them too because she ended up suing the job because they said that she uh, hurt a patient or something like that. But she proved to them that it wasn't her on that shift. She ended up suing the job and got money for the job and still was working at that job. That's the crazy part, guys. Like they tried everything to get rid of this lady, but it did not work. She literally did her freaking job correctly, and I seen with my two eyes. So I said I, when I saw that point happen, I was like, you know what? I got to get that out of here and find me another job okay i gotta i gotta get out of here so one random night i was upstairs talking to one of the cnas um and we we're having a conversation and during the conversation a part comes up and she goes to me oh i want to tell you something but i don't want you to go back and tell anybody but i'm saying this to you just out of protection for you now when she said this i already knew what was going to happen because i had this feeling that something weird was happening um even I didn't explain this to you guys because I'll get into this in another story time. I didn't talk to the staff there because there ended up being some drama with this other girl. And I just, honestly, I don't even really talk to y'all. And y'all, the thing about me is I think people get upset that I don't give them time. I don't show them the time of day. And I am that type of person. I can completely act like you don't exist in a room, especially if you've done me wrong. Like I won't speak at all. And I don't know if my face reads it or my aura, People just can't stand that about me because I literally can sit in a room with an arch nemesis of mine and not say a word and never even lock eyes with them, never even look their way. I have mastered that so well. I just, I can do it. And I think that they just couldn't stand me because I didn't want to be part of the stuff and the drama that they entitled. And it's so funny that I say this because when I went to school, I met this really nice girl. Um, she was really cool, whatever. I kind of like built like a bond with her and we were friends for a little bit of time, right? So when she graduated, when we graduated together, I had sealed, I got my job first and she was having a hard time finding a job. So I ended up uh, hooking her up with the job 
with me and they still needed a per diem nurse to work 11 to 7 even though I had 11 to 7 full time they still needed someone to fill in so she was working with me as my fill in for the 11 to 7 I kid you guys not when she got into that job I don't know if her head got big I don't know if they gassed her up or whatever she started to kind of you know go down that I'm gonna hang with these types of people type of situation and listen up baby you can do whatever you want but don't think you about to swim back this way and try to talk to me when I tell you guys this girl tried to act like she ain't fuck with me after that like we wasn't cool like that you ain't gotta worry about me huh I'm not chasing or looking for friendship for you but if you don't feel like you don't want to talk to me better for me I don't care go about your business right I kid you guys not after that it's been years I have not talked to that girl in years last year you guys know this girl DM me and invited me to her son's birthday party uh, and she goes oh I haven't seen you in a while I would like to catch up and stuff like that catch up with who because when I was when I was going through stuff at that job and you could have been there behind me, you know, helping me out, whatever, you decide to turn your back on me and go with them them barbarians and try to be cool, whatever. And that's the that's the thing. I don't it's a Haitian thing. Like if you don't like me, if you if y'all don't wanna like fuck with me or whatever, that's fine with me. Cause I don't need y'all. And I've proven that because guess what? It's been years later and you still hitting me up. Good. Okay. See? Like I said, I don't have time for that. I, I, I really don't. So the CNA goes to me once I'm talking upstairs to her. She goes to me. I just want to say this to you, but you can't tell anybody. She was like, I was asked to put a, um, a cup of pills out on your cart um, in the morning. And um, it's a way for, for you to get set up. And I'm like, a, a meds? I was, she was like, yeah. Um, they gave me like a little cup of meds. You know the little pill cup you give to the uh, residents when you're passing pills? You pop them in the... Um, the med cup so she was told by the dns even though the dns was trying to get rid of her <laughs> she was told by the dns oh i need you to um put this on her cart for her and then put this on her cart when she's not looking I, guys i'm not even joking with y'all i'm not even joking she told the she told the cna to put the med cup on the cart after med pass i come into the office drop the cup of meds on the med cart and then leave so that they can get me written up for a med error. Mind you, there was a couple of pills too they was trying to get because guess what? A few days later, <laughs> few days later, while I was closing up, it was 11 to seven, obviously the 73 nurse came in and the 73 nurse that came in, she just, me and her, we didn't talk. Like she, mm -mm, I, mm -mm, I, I, yeah. We did report whatever little report whatever and then i walked out i don't i you know i don't really i never really i never really mess with her and i can give you guys a story time why that story time involves cops and everything so if you want that story time just go ahead and leave your comment down below like this girl yeah she was she was she was definitely one of my biggest haters and i, I one of my biggest haters so that morning a past report and then when i go look on the car because every time you get on the car you gotta train you gotta actually empty the car put new insure put new straws put new um like little slips for the uh, pill crush you gotta empty and clean the cart off so i went to go clean the cart off again i look on the cart guys and i kid you not this was a few days later i look on the cart and there's a nice cup size full of pills and i remember one pill on it was a dolcasat pill um like a stool softener. I remember that one pill at the top and it was a whole bunch of pills at the bottom. It was just a nice little uh, measuring cup, the little white cup. And I sit there and mind you, the DNS came in cause she comes in early in the morning, right? So I'm like, these motherfuckers really think that they funny. They really think they gonna pull the wool over my eyes. They think that I'm some stupid did. Even if the CNA didn't tell me that a few days before, I'm not stupid. Why would there be a cup of meds on my thing? Like, all right, all right, cool, whatever. So I go into the office. She got the door open. I was like, to her, I'm reporting this to you right now in front of you so that we have this together. I'm cleaning the cart, and this cup of meds was not here before, and it's here now. I don't know who put this on my cart, but it does not belong to me. All my meds have been given and signed out for, so I don't know whose meds these are. And I'm saying this to her verbally. And she's like, oh, okay real fake and phony too which like, i couldn't stand that lady she was so fake and the thing about her her fakeness was all out of fear because she was scared of me like uh, like she like she she was a punk you know what i'm saying like a punk <laughs> she was a punk bitch you know what i'm saying like i couldn't stand this lady like i could not stand her i could not stand she was a official karen who thought that because she was a karen that she had one over us but she could not stand my aura and she knew that 
I'm not the one to be messed with. So I go into the office, I'm telling her that, and I even ended up taking a photo and I wrote a note, in the, uh, I wrote a note, and I actually made sure I let the um, HR know that there was some type of fishy med stuff going on at the job or whatever on my shift, and it looks like somebody was trying to, you know, do something, right? So that went by, they couldn't do anything about that, so they just kind of had to fall back on that plan, right? So at that point, I already knew, like, this is my time to go. Ooh, this got a. This is strong fragrance, guys. Mm. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, God, this is strong, and it. It's almost like a hairspray. But wow, it definitely gives you like a matte effect instantaneously, y'all. So the lashes I have on right now are the Ion 3D Full Mink Lashes, and these are the Wispy Full. These are the XL ones. These are very, very nice. I get these from the Dollar Tree. As you guys can see, they look really nice on. Very cute. They're very, very wispy and fun. I haven't worn strip lashes in a long time, so um, hopefully they came out pretty good. I might have to do like a little liner eye on them, but I kind of closed them in nicely, so these are the lashes. So in preparation for all this drama going on, guys, I already knew that I had to figure something out. Now, this was my first job the only job that has so this is kind of how I learn like you got to have more hustles on the side just because you never know my other friends that I went to nursing school with she was working at this pediatric office which was not too far from where I live at it was maybe like 15 to 20 minute drive so I was like you know what let me go ahead and see if she got an opening her job I told her what was going on at my job or whatever and she's like to me, oh, they're looking for a nurse right now. Here, I can, I can give you the hookup. Like, I can tell her that, you know, I have someone I went to school with that's looking for a job. So at that point, I decided to go ahead for the interview. I was still working uh, 11 to 7. So after 11 to 7, I went in around 8 o'clock. And I remember going to this diner um, waiting because the office opened at 8 or 9. So I will leave my job from at, um, 7 a.m. Not 7 a.m. I never left at 7 I leave around like 7.30, 7.45. And then I would go have breakfast at this place at this diner and then I would go to the other job so I went in for the interview she hired me the same day and then I had to come in for training but I told her I'm still working 11 to 7 at this job can you just give me um, a couple of days so I can kind of get out of it so what I did was I immediately went to the the job at the assisted living and I asked them that I told them that I would no longer be working full time 11 to 7 that I needed to go per diem so I cut them off right then and there they already had a backup which was the girl that was I was cool with so she went ahead uh, the girl that I was cool with she went ahead and started covering the shifts I told them Im starting immediately I'm not working a shift no more because y'all think y'all gonna play me honey I always have a plan you cannot I always have an A B C and D plan you can never come for me and think I'm gonna just fall in shambles and fall to the shambles of hell it's not gonna happen honey because i'm always prepared i always got a b c and d honey you can't and i think they were so mad when they realized that i had already found my way out so at that point i was um i was going from that job to the other job in the morning they would have me train for like four hours so i was really tired i was working 11 p.m at night all the way till noon the next day so i was tired finally i went in once they fit, finally put me per diem they gave the my ex-friend they gave her the full-time position right so they still need a fillers for the 11 to 7. so one day i go in because i haven't heard anyone they'll update you with the new schedule right so the new month came in and i'm going in there thinking like okay like i'm gonna be on the schedule um maybe they got me for like a, day, a night or two whatever which i didn't want to go in anyways i really didn't care i could care less i had my new position and this job this position i had at the pediatrics was full time guys it was full time with benefits and stuff so i said you know what let me just go ahead and take this because i also had another gig this was a full-time position and i took this full-time position just because i was like you know what, let me do a full-time for a little bit and this is before i got that private duty job with the millionaire this is before once I got the job with him, then I moved this job into part time. So I was able to kind of move it. I went for the higher pay and then kind of did that one per day, like part time, like two days a week or three days a week, which the pediatric office was cool with. They allowed me to do that, which is great. Again, you build rapport with people. They like you. They'll, they'll cater to the things that they need, especially if it's beneficial for them. So the pediatric office, they were so good to me. They gave me like three days a week or two days a week. They had me part time, which I love. Um, so I went into the office, guys to go look at the schedule because if you're per diem they're not going to send you the schedule you don't it's diff it's going to be different so i went into the office that day and i went to go look at the schedule and guess why i was removed off the schedule 
they took me off the schedule, which I'm not mad about, but I just needed some clarification because you didn't fire me, so why am I off the schedule? I just wanted to make sure, because you're not going to go out here and say you fired me from this job. We ne There was no termination. There was nothing. This literally was a separation. It was a separate. We parted ways. Um, so I, I so the, the DNS is in there. And again, she's such a punk. Like she, like that, and that's what I'm saying. Why do people take these le leadership roles if they don't have the balls? Or they take leadership roles and then hide under their skirt. Like, it's just like, I just don't get it. Like, some of y'all want to be like the nurse practitioner. Y'all want to be like the lead a nurse in charge. Y'all want to do that. But then y'all don't have the stomach for it. Or y'all don't have the guts for it. Or y'all not a person of your word. Like, y'all don't hold it down like that. Y'all don't have the aura for it. But y'all want to be in those positions. You have to be able to be a woman of your word in that type of position. You have to stand on a thousand. You got to be that person and, and be confident. I work with some punk AF uh, DNSs like that just just I just oh just disgusting to me like y'all will quickly fire people and not and just be a punk about it or like whatever whatever it is so I go she's in the office rambling through papers because she could never find herself because she was so unorganized which is another thing how are you running an entire thing and you just cannot even get your life together whatever so I go in there I'm like to her is there a reason why and just like that because at this point I don't care I go to her, is there a reason why I'm not on the schedule anymore? And she goes, oh, I don't know anything about that. I, I, I don't know anything about that. And again, like, stand on 10. Like, come on, sis. Turn around and be like to me, oh, because you, you're not, we don't have any time. We don't have any space for you. Say that. But your punk ass couldn't, you know? Like, <laughs> so I'm like to her, so why am I not on the schedule? Like, is you, did you guys get rid of me? Like, what's the deal? And she goes, oh, I don't know. I don't have, I don't do it. I don't, um... I don't work with the schedule, which is a lie because you do work with the schedule. I've seen you in the morning in the office working on the schedule with the scheduler. So what are you, why are you lying? But again, because she's a punk and she ain't a woman of a word. She, she was scared of me. I'm telling y'all she was intimidated by me. Mind you, I didn't do nothing to this. Lady. I never put paws on her. I just, you know, it's my aura. I'm telling y'all the aura, it kills it. The aura kills people. It kills them. So she goes, oh, I, I, I don't know. Oh, I don't, I don't know. I don't make the schedule. And I'm like, oh, yeah. I was like, okay, whatever. And I walked out the door. And I never saw that place again. That's it. Like, I, I never saw that place again after that one. I was just like, okay. Like, y'all going to be corny like that? Don't have to worry about me, honey. I, I, I never went back to that job ever again. Nobody ever called me. Nobody ever said anything. I went about my business. Like, it is what it is, right? I remember this one time we had a patient downstairs who was on digoxin. And if you guys know a patient on digoxin, you have to check their apical pulse, right? And you need to check the pulse and it has to be greater than 60. If it's less than 60, you hold the medication, right? I was the only person who followed the rules for the medication. This is a simple medication. You learn this in nursing school. You know that you have to you have to check that apical pulse. You know that if it's less than 60, you have to hold the medication. I kid y'all not. All you saw on that chart was me signing it above 60, giving it, showing that I gave, showing the measurement of the pulse and showing that I gave it, checked and signed it. I'm over there watching people sign this medication out at the, this, giving this patient the digoxin at 54, giving it to him at 56, give it to him at 50. And I'm just sitting there. All those freaking med errors that y'all had on that one patient, y'all really thought, y'all really thought that me being the only one, and I kid y'all not, the only one that did it correctly. Y'all could have got rid of all those people, but y'all decided to go and get me some other way, even though y'all couldn't get me on this one, but it just proves that. They can't fuck with you like that the way they want to, especially when you do your job, okay? So for my new girls, my new grads going out there, just make sure you check everything because nobody can fuck with you if you do your job. And that's the thing that they hate. That's why they hated me the most. <laughs> I'm telling y'all, that's why they hated me the most because number one, I was in key keen with y'all and number two, I was that girl. And that's why they hated me so much and they just couldn't get me. So make sure y'all do what y'all got to do because nobody can say anything about your work ethic as long as you do what you got to do. All right, y'all. So I went ahead and put me a little wig on. I did do my lips off camera and added like a little under eye mascara, a little contour, whatever. 
you know, if y'all want an in-depth tutorial, just tell me to do a couple story times in one because it'll take me a long time to do. Um, but the hair is pretty. If you guys watched my vlog when I got my teeth pulled, I showed you guys a wig that I had destroyed the lace on. So I cut the lace off of it and added a closure. So it went from being a 13x4 to a 7x5 now, and it looks amazing. All I did was just cut the frontal off and then sew the new closure on top of it. It closed the wig up and made it like more secure. So it has everything. It's glueless AF, guys bye bye knots I literally just replaced the closure with a match I replaced the frontal with a matching closure um yeah I gotta I gotta do more of that like I'm gonna try to do another one DIYing a wig that I have and just turning it from a frontal to a closure wig this was very easy and I did it last night I didn't expect it to come out this nice but it I'm not mad about it, but yeah, make sure you guys catch up on the vlogs. So as far as the lip combination today, guys, I did the Ruby Kisses Matte Lipstick in the color Rosy Brown. I get this from the beauty supply store. It's like $3. I also went in with some L'Oreal Paris uh, Lip Gloss, and this is the color 40 in the Blissful Blush. I forgot what type of lip gloss this is, but it's one of their lip glosses. Very nice pink color. And then my favorite, favorite, favorite for now is my e.l.f. Um, lip Oil, and this is... Um, in the color honey talks i absolutely love this you wear this with or without makeup it's just a great lip oil does the freaking job time. again i hope you guys enjoyed this story time it's always a lesson it's always a lesson and for my new grads out there anybody going out into the world just be vigilant about the people around you just you know keep to yourself but make sure you're in the loop at the same time but sometimes you ain't gotta be part of everything and sometimes it's always best to stick with your morals don't do things just because you feel like elf i need to get this you know i need to do this you don't got to do it you don't got to sell yourself or sell your soul to get anywhere and like I said look at me now like okay again if you're new to my channel make sure you guys go ahead and subscribe hit that notification bell and also share this video guys hopefully you guys enjoy this one per usual and I will catch y'all in a later one bye